The Skunk. Story by Mac Barnett. Art by Patrick McDonald. The Skunk. When I left my house, there was a skunk on my doorstep. I kept very still. I did not want to startle him, but the skunk did not seem scared. Slowly and carefully, I backed away and started down the street. The skunk started right after me. We walked together for a few blocks, and I thought it was funny that a skunk and I could be going in the same direction. But after a mile, I realized I was being followed. When I sped up, the skunk sped up. When I slowed, the skunk slowed. I took many wild turns, and so did the skunk. I turned to the skunk and I asked, what do you want? The skunk did not answer. The skunk was a skunk. I bought the skunk an apple. I gave him a saucer of milk. I offered him my pocket watch. The skunk did not want any of these things. This was ridiculous. I was wasting my time. So I hailed a taxi and sped off down the avenue. The skunk took the next cab. Outside the opera house, I hid behind a shrub. The skunk didn't see me crouching there. Success! I bounded up the steps and took my seat. I was relieved to find myself between a lady and a gray old officer. But then, of course, skunks can't buy tickets to the opera. The curtain rose and I smiled. In the middle of the first solo, the skunk came trotting down the aisle. He climbed up the lady's gown and took a seat on her, on her head. She did not notice. She was wrapped. Excuse me, madam, I said, but there seems to be a skunk on your head. Hush, said the lady. This is my favorite part. So strange and so sad. I had to escape. I excused myself and hurried out a fire exit. The skunk pursued me across the city. He followed me through the sculpture garden and the cemetery. I could not get away. I ran to the carnival and bought a ticket to the Ferris wheel and the skunk boarded the gondola after mine. We rode around in great circles. He was not getting any nearer but he was not getting farther away. I'll admit, I, be I began to panic. I ran past the wharf and turned down an alley. It was a dead end. The skunk walked toward me. Go away, skunk, I shouted. But the skunk came closer and closer. And I lifted a manhole and climbed down into the sewers. I hurried underneath the streets and many times I paused to catch my breath, but never for long. I had to go on. When I came up, I was in a different part of the city. I found a new house. I bought new things. And on my first night, when I opened my bedroom door, guess who was waiting there for me? Nobody. I threw myself a party. I cooked a large dinner. People brought me gifts. After dessert, during the dancing, I thought about the skunk. What was he doing? Was he looking for me? Was he back in his burrow? Was he following someone else? I left the party to find my skunk. He was not in the alley. He was not in the carnival. He was not beneath the city. I could not find him anywhere. I searched and searched. There was the skunk. I trailed him down the sidewalk, careful to remain hidden. I think I will keep an eye on him and make sure he does not follow me again.